Hello students. So, uh, we were discussing about the classification of physical quantities in our last session. So, to, now we are going to continue further with it and we will be now classifying as to what exactly are the SI system of units. So, this is, these are some of the units that I have just put it together. As you can see, these are all dependent on some other quantities. Right? So we will be trying to understand as to what exactly do they depend upon, what are their derived units and so on. But before that, let me tell you about the basic or the base quantities. What are their basic system of units? How do you measure them? So let me first tell you about that. The first one to go is the length. So the length in the SI system of unit is going to be measured in meter and you will say that the system when you are trying to measure it and you have to denote it as well. So this will be denoted by meter m. Okay? Then going over to the next one, let's say you have mass. So the mass is going to be measured in kilograms and obviously the system that you will be denoting it as it will be kg ok then comes the time so time measured in seconds and you have the denotion given by S ok so these are the first three base quantities let's go further the next one is you will be studying it later on some of you would have already studied is electric current this is going to be measured in ampere and the way you are going to denote it is going to be A ok then the next one is a very common thing is temperature now temperature, you are familiar with uh, measuring a temperature in degrees centigrade and sometimes in degree Fahrenheit. But the standard international system of units state that you need to measure it in Kelvin. So Kelvin is related to degree centigrade as well. So we'll discuss about that. So this is denoted by K. Then you have the amount of substance. In chemistry you will be able to study about that. So the so amount of substance. So you will be measuring this in moles and it is denoted as mole. Okay. One last system of your end. If you denote that as well. So this, this basically is related to how much is the intensity of light that is coming out of any particular thing. Yeah. So that is denoted by luminous The system in which this is measured is known as candela and it is denoted as C. Please don't confuse it with cadmium or periodic. Okay. So these are the, the basic system of units that we had. Right? Now, let's go further and try to understand about what are the derived units, whichever units 
we have mentioned. I have put it on the board stating that these are all the derived units. So if I say that these are all the derived units, then how do we get to those derived units? Right? That is for instance, if you talk about area, then area is what? How do we compute the area? So let me first start off with area itself. So area is going to be defined as how much? It's going to be equals to the length of any particular quantity times the width of that particular quantity. Right? So this is how we come to the area. Then if we have volume. So how do we define volume? Volume will be equals to the area into the height. When we are talking about the three-dimensional picture, so it's going to be equal to the area into the height. So this is how we compute the volume. Now, let's go further and talk about the other quantity, um, speed. So what exactly is speed? Speed is defined as how much is the distance that is covered in a particular interval of time. You will have already studied that. We will be studying it again, but as of now, let's try to understand it. So speed will be equals to the length of the path divided by the time taken. So as you know, length is a fundamental system of unit, time is another fundamental system of unit. Therefore, this is a derived system. Similarly, if you have acceleration, so what is acceleration? Acceleration is defined as, that is how much is the change in speed taking place. Let's say body starting from rest, requires some velocity and finally it comes back to rest. So what happens as a result? There is a change in velocity as well taking place when it's starting from rest, requiring some velocity and then again coming back to rest. So as a result, we say that there is, and right now I am stating it as speed, so it will be equal to speed divided by the time taken. Okay? Later on I will be qualifying this particular expression. So acceleration is going to be defined as speed per unit time. Right? Now, since we have defined acceleration, let me tell you as to what exactly is defined as a force. So what is the force? So force is going to be equal to the mass of a quantity times the acceleration produced. So it's equal to the mass of the quantity times the acceleration that is produced. So this is how we come to the conclusion of the force. Now if you have a force that is acting on a particular object. So from that force, we can derive other units as well. That is a pressure. So what is pressure? Pressure is nothing but force per unit area. Force is the, it, okay. Now you may say that both in the case of force and in the case of pressure and using the derived units itself that is acceleration is a derived quantity here force is a derived quantity area is a derived quantity so there are derived quantities do not have any limitation that is since they have been derived so it can be possible that the derived quantities have been derived from other derived quantities as well or they have been derived from primary quantities or the base quantities so that doesn't matter so this is <coughs> how we classify the derivations. One thing else as well. Uh, let me change here. I think I did not mention about density and work. So <coughs> let me mention about that as well. So what is density? Density is how do we define it? 
For any particular quantity, let's say you have some mass, and how that mass is spread across the complete volume of that. So that is what is known as the density. That is mass per unit volume is what defines for us the density. And then you have the work. Work is what? When any quantity, any force is being applied on an object, and the object starts moving as a result we say that there is some amount of work being done so work is equals to force into distance so this is how we explain as to how much work is that means the work hopefully till this particular point it is clear so we have defined the basic quantities, the base quantities to say we have defined the derived quantities, there are obviously other derived quantities as well. So as we go on, we can go on and on. So these are some of the examples. Now, now from these derived quantities, if you are required to find out what are the units, in what units are they going to be measured, so that has to be figured out. So now let's try to understand about the units. So I'll try to give you a flavor of a couple of them and you can figure out the rest of it. So, let's go further, let's see, let's start off with area, I guess, we started off with area. <coughs> Excuse me. So, area, we define as equals to length into the width. Now, how exactly are you going to measure the length? You will be measuring length in meters. So, <coughs> when you measure it in meters, you will say meter here and width also you will be measuring it in meters, in meters. So effectively the unit is going to define as 